Hi everyone, it's Chris from the Evermore podcast on the Slide Roll Pass YouTube channel. So that's another victory for Newcastle United that's unbeaten in seven now. 2 0 victory over Brentford today. We're all feeling quite confident. I did call it as 2 0 on the Evermore podcast. Not that I'm claiming there <laughs> any kind of winning so I didn't put a bet on. Uh, gamble responsibly if you do. But yeah, another assured performance from, uh, from Eddie Howe's Mags. Absolutely fantastic. You know, we never really looked like we were at any threat of losing that game at all. You know, and we'll obviously come on to some of the key moments in a second there. But just remind me of how we lined up, really. We weren't changed uh, from the West Ham side. And obviously drew down in London last week. Uh, there was late fitness tests for uh, for Ryan Fraser, the Joe Litton. They both passed it and made it to the team. So they continued. Kraft continued to right back. And uh, obviously Jacob Murphy continued in the absence of uh, Alan Sir Maximum, which hopefully should be back in the next couple of weeks if uh, if he keeps carrying on that train that he's He's blasting away on we'll keep seeing on social media. So, yeah, so we started the game. Obviously, Brentford are in shocking form. You know, we, we didn't really think there would be too much of a threat, I suppose. Not to sound too cocky because you can't take any game for granted in the Premier League these days. But they didn't have much to threaten us with, really. You know, we, we started the game strong. We are passing the ball around really well. They didn't look too threatening. And uh, this game really changed completely early on. It was around about kind of the nine, ten minute mark. I think uh, Jacob Murphy gets the ball. He breaks down the, the byline. He puts it across. John Joe Shelby just get, gets beyond him. Matty Target comes out and put a tackle in with uh, Josh De Silva. Now, I'm quite surprised in, in real time. When I looked at it, I thought it was just a 50-50. Um, goes down. Mike Dean, the Dean machine that he is, gives a free kick to Brentford of all fucking things. Um, and then, obviously, he grabs the earpiece. He says, Vars, looking at it. The commentator that I was 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 uh, watching on the game, uh, on the stream, it was uh, Effin Coco, I think it was, ex-Wimbledon. He spotted straight away and he said, you know, that the Silva's been naughty there, he's left one in. I and mean, when you watch the replay, it was an absolutely sickening challenge by the Silva on Matty Target. Matty Target's really lucky that he hasn't got a broken leg for that. He, he comes in, you know, comes in maliciously, comes in to hurt. He's, he's, he's stamping down on, on, on Target's leg. And uh, Matty Target's really, really fortunate that he's not severely injured for that. So Dean goes to the to the TV. Once you've looked at the replays, you think even Mike Dean cannot let this lad stay on the pitch. Red card, sends him off. Brentford are down to 10 men, makes it much more challenging for them. They were already struggling before that, I felt, just in the first kind of 10 minutes. But that red card really did change things. And obviously, Brentford were right up against it. So we kept pushing hard, kept going against it. We're passing the ball around really well. You know, again, the midfield were looking, were looking good. Um, I suppose the standards are so high, we're probably expecting them just to smash everybody right from the off. I know I was, but but they, they were feeling themselves into the game. And then kind of in the half-hour mark, just after the half-hour mark, Ryan Fraser puts an unbelievable ball across the box. Joe Litton smashes a header in. Unbelievable header. Bottom corner. He's running off celebrating like a madman. An absolute bullet of a header. Ironically enough, Chris Wood had missed a couple of real sitter chances before that, one in particular at the back stick. But Joe Litton showed him how to do it. It was an absolutely brilliant header um, coming from deep as he does in midfield now. And uh, we were 1 0 up. And after that, you know, Brentford looked like they were really struggling. They did a couple of couple of breaks, but nothing really came off. The Bravka was pretty much having a having a pie and a bob roll, really, in the first half. He was doing sweet FA. And then uh, just before the half time break, we, we break and Fabian Shaw, of all people, with a beautifully weighted through ball pass. I didn't even know what Shaw was doing up there, to be honest with you. And a uh, through ball to Joe Willock, who, who takes it in his stride. And uh, again, he got that goal last week. I think I, I tweeted and I did say, I wonder if the goal machine is back. And it certainly looks that way, the way he took it. He opens his body up. He just absolutely bends in the top corner. Unbelievable finish. We're 2 0 up. And it looks like there's only one winner in this game. Absolutely fantastic. First half, whistle blows. I feel them confident, you know, as Newcastle fans are probably thinking how many goals we're going to score here. Um, to be fair, the Brentford keeper, I think he kept it down. Could have been four or five nil. Uh, Ray, I thought he made some really good saves, some good positional sense. I felt a bit sorry for him at one point. It kind of reminded me of our keepers in years gone by. But but no, we were absolutely dominant. Came out in the second half. We started quite well. We looked like we are going to put in the sword really early again. Um, you know, again, Ray, I was called in action a couple of times. Then, But then they made a couple of changes. And they started to kind of find their way back into the game a little bit. But a 2-0 down, it was a real struggle for them. I think the biggest cheer in the second half has got to be said, just from a football fan's perspective, was I think it was on the 52nd minute, I'm just double-checking there, that Christian Eriksen came on for Matthias Janssen. Absolutely superb to see Christian Eriksen back on a football pitch. The whole stadium stood up to give him a stand ovation. Brentford and Newcastle fans are like, I think every football fan in the world watching this game was, was, was probably cheering and clapping to see this guy come back and play football. Anybody who watched that game against Finland in the Euros was it was just 
it was so frightening. Time stood still, you know, and we we, we weren't even sure if Christian Eriksen was going to going to still be on this earth, let alone be able to play football again. Obviously, release him into Milan, so it's brilliant to see him back as a footballer. Brilliant to see the ovation that he got. I think you'll get that in every ground that he goes to. And he did give Brentford a bit of a creative spark, but you can almost tell a player is a little bit too good for the players around him. I think some of the passes he was hitting, some of the you know the movements he was he was looking, he had the head in the swivel just like we always know from Christian Eriksen. And he's he's looking for passes that aren't there because the players aren't quite there to keep up with them. You know, even when they brought Ivan Tony on, Ivan Tony didn't really do much. I mean, I think the early praise of the season for Ivan Tony was a little bit a little bit uh, knee-jerk. I never thought he was he was all that. People were saying England call-ups and everything else. And I didn't really think he was all that. Yeah, he worked hard and everything, but his goal return was poor. So, so yeah, I wasn't overly threatened when Ivan Tony came on. I thought Dan Byrne and, and Shaw dealt with him superbly well. Big shout out to Matty Target again. Absolutely superb. Got the living shit kicked out of him this game. Obviously, De Silva nearly broke his leg. And there was a, there was a few that left one on him. I left one on him as well. Centre half, the big centre half left one on him. But Matty Target kept plugging away. He had a great game. Absolutely superb. Did really well. You know, in terms of Newcastle United, in terms of the players that we saw, um, you know, uh, Bruno Gomez came on for Jacob Murphy on the 64th minute. So we saw a lot more Bruno today. So composed, just comfortable on the ball. The commentator said it about uh, Christian Eriksen, about, you know, just good players have more time and they don't panic. I got that sense from Bruno today. You know, he got the ball down, looking, little one-twos with John Joe, spraying a couple of nice passes out. Had a shot on goal as well. It looked a lot closer in, in real time and the replay was kind of a, a bit far away. But I definitely think Bruno will, will give us something uh, in this side and these running the games that we've got coming up. And uh, yeah, it was really, really good to see him to be honest, uh, in, in, in terms of what he could what he could do moving forward. He got stuck into the game. He got a lot more game time than he's had previously, putting in some challenges. He put in a lovely shoulder charge challenge towards the back end of the game as well, You know, which I think they were screaming at Mike Dean for a free kick for, and they were never going to get. So I think Bruno can do a little bit of the a bit of the beauty and a bit of the beast as well. So I think he's going to be a hell of a player for us. Ryan Fraser again, ran his arse off. Absolutely superb. Um, this guy is reborn under Eddie Howe. You know, he's one of them players that, we were worried about history and all the media talking about, you know, what kind of, you know, what what kind of um, player is Ryan Fraser going to be for Eddie Howe? And I just think, to be fair, he's been absolutely brilliant. He's probably been one of the best players alongside, um, you know, likes of Joe Linton and even John Joe Shelby as well. Again, continues to look really, really good. I'm not sure if Bruno gets a start, you know, in the next game against Brighton. I think he did really, really well. And he, he could, you could easily warrant him getting the start. Joe Linton, again, had a bit of a, a bit of a whack and he was kind of limping around a bit. He was holding his knee, but he but he saw the game out. Joe Willock got a smash in the mouth, but that, that won't be enough to keep him out. You know, John Joe again looked quite good. He had a couple of free kick opportunities that he probably should have done a bit better with, but all in all, he had a decent game. I just think, it, you know, we don't want to rush too much into getting Bruno in. You know, that that's obviously us. Um, and beating in seventh, you know, we're 14th now in the Premier League. Leeds got battered today again. They look like a team on the fall. Unfortunately, Manchester United was shit and couldn't get Watford. Um, I'll put Watford away. Uh, Burnley gets another point against Palace. You know, so it's not ideal results for us, but all we can do is concentrate on what we do and keep winning games. And I think we're absolutely superb again today. Just well drilled, well organised. The commentator said it a couple of times as well in terms of, you know, any player that comes into Eddie Howe's side just knows what he's doing. You know, and again, it, it's it's crazy to think about how the media are eventually seeing everything that we saw that was wrong with Steve Bruce. Everything that Eddie Howe is, Steve Bruce wasn't. He wasn't tact tactically aware. He wasn't structured. He wasn't planned. He didn't get the players fit. He didn't get the players understanding what he wanted from them. He just said, oh, go on, lads, and you go another game. And that's why we were frustrated. And that's why we lost so many games. So not to talk too much about Steve Bruce, but that's what the comparison is. you know. And the media finally waking up smelling the coffee that we've got a really, really astute young manager here who's unbeaten in seventh. He's dragged us from you know 19th, 20th in the league up to 14th. You know, and it's, it's absolutely fantastic. We're two points behind Leicester City, who you wouldn't even dreamt that at the start of the season, how shit we were. So, yeah, well, Evans going in the right direction. Obviously, we've got, you know, Brighton next, which is a massive game. It's in James's Park. Brighton are a good side. They pass the ball around really well. I think it'll be a great game for the neutrals. And hopefully, you know, our form will continue and uh, and we'll be able to get a result against Brighton as well at home. And that could push us even further up the league. As the fans are singing today, E-I-E-I-O, the Premier League, we go. So that's, that's all for me, guys. Fantastic. Enjoy it. Get pissed up. Have a few beers. Bring on Brighton. We're not scared of anybody. Let's keep supporting that team. We call United. And I'll be back with Marks for some pitch patter on Monday. I'm back with the boys next Wednesday for more evermore. Take it easy, guys. Cheers. Bye.